Hello there. Welcome this afternoon. We're going to talk about how to create an ISO 1345 ready quality management system. And it's very timely because uh, the previous session I was at talked about the FDA rulings and re recommendations. And one thing that they said in the summary that Mike Busker did was to, to follow this, to create this for your, your organization. And so I'm going to share specifically about Norton Healthcare's um, experience. So we started the process about three years ago. I want to talk to you about before and after COVID. So this is when uh, this when we got started. So first, I want you to meet Krusty. Krusty is my 2003 Honda CRV. It was nicknamed by my children who begged me to get a new car, and I refused. I said, no, this is, uh, it's been a family for 20 years, bought it from my father-in-law uh, for $4,000. And uh, I have a personal statement about this car, a purpose statement. We'll talk about why this is important in a quality management system. So the purpose is to, uh, of this is, is to uh, maintain its cost effectiveness as a means of transportation. As long as that's still working, we're all good. So that's really what the essence of this quality management system is about related to Krusty, my car. So welcome, and we're going to have a little dialogue here. And since it's a small group, and I appreciate you all being here this time of the afternoon, let's let's have some more dialogue about it. All right, what you'll take back for today, hopefully we gain some more insight on what 1345 is. Uh, learn why we chose to seek that certificate certification. Um, and we're going to conduct a, our own quality management system ISO readiness assessment. So I gave you some, uh, some things to write on. And so we'll do that for your own benefit. You don't have to turn it in. There won't be a quiz. But I think it's important that you go through the exercises we've done at Horton Healthcare. And then um, investigate implementation strategies. Understand there's all kinds of ways that you could go ahead and, and launch in 1345 for your company. Um, and each has their own unique advantages. I'll share with you what we did and sort of worked for us, but your situation may be a little different. And then lastly, uh, we'll see some of the benefits of an ISO 1345 ready quality management system. What's the payoff? And we'll talk about that uh, toward the end. So back to Krusty. So when you get a new car today, they still give you a manual, quality manual. And it tells you everything you need to know about how to turn on the EC, run the radio, and so on. Uh, and as time goes on, what's changed for me is I've had to become a mechanic because during ISO, I'm sorry, during the COVID uh, lockdowns, I couldn't get my car repaired. So they said, you have to figure it out on your own. And so you'll have what are called quality system procedures. So that's a little bit more detail uh, that, than you would expect in the quality manual. Quality manual is very high level, right? This is a little bit further down the, the, the more specific. And even more specific than that might be uh, Videos. Does anyone ever watch YouTube videos prepared? Yeah. Yep. Thank goodness for that, because that's how I fixed a very expensive part of my car because I had no clue of watching several YouTube, so I was able to, to do this during the COVID lockdown. Um, there's also uh, onboard diagnostics, even as old as this car. You've got the basics and we need to. Yes, right. So thank goodness for that, because that still works. I've used that some. Uh, and then also, if I were to take this across country, which I probably wouldn't, is given an age. You, uh, there are regular audits. So that's when you go to a, a, a Honda dealership, they'll give you the, the recommendations for repair and so on. And then lastly, uh, part of a quality management system is continuous improvement. So as this car is aged, uh, the bumper's got a little uh, funky looking. So I, I get Googled and watched a video of using this bumper paint. It looks like a million bucks. So I'm really pleased to how it's turning out. So that really, if you're trying to explain this to your team, how it all fits together. All right, and maybe just take a step further, there's kind of a hierarchy of, of uh, records. So at the top of that food chain, again, is your quality manual. Uh, the next level down would be policies. And what we had to do at Norton is we had existing legacy SOPs and, and processes, and we just needed to cross-reference them. We didn't have to re rewrite and read that. So I wanted to make sure you understand that. Keep what you have and then just- Match, match them to the ISO. Yes, match the ISO. Yes, so what we had is, uh, there were certain things that we did work doing that were required to write for 1345, and we had to consult to kind of help uh, identify, those, identify those gaps. That's exactly right, Selena. Uh, and then the next level down, more specific, would be what we call quality system procedures, and that would be analogous to you know how to take the, uh, you want to change the battery or replace the alternator, and things like that. It's a little bit more specific uh, and granular, and then even further down would be something like work instruction, or in my case, in my car, watching a YouTube video. So again, very, very specific, but they all tie to each other. 
right? So as long as my car is running, it's, it's really dependent upon these other things being in place. And from an auditing standpoint, the records is what this is a very important thing for us during our journey. Now we have our, our um, a CMS for all the repairs we do, but other records, uh, training records and things like that were a little bit weak. And so we had to do a little bit of work to get uh, that to pass muster. Right, so that, that's how it all fits together. Any questions about that? Okay, because it's an important thing to, to understand that there's, a, there's kind of a hierarchy there. So how does all this fit together? Um, there are a, a lot of pieces in, a, in quality system procedures for ISO, but it's really simple to so fit it with one hand, right? We start with clause four, and that's all about the quality manual, how you do document control, how you do record control, that kind of thing. It's really spelled out very well in there. That's all clause four is, just basically quality control, uh, records control, document control. The next one is about the management responsibility, and that's fairly straightforward because you manage it, evaluate the QMS, making sure that it's working, okay? The next one is clause six. It's all about resource management. That would include infrastructure, your people, anything it takes to run your quality management system. Uh, clause seven is probably the area that we had, had to spend a lot more time those were things that we weren't really documenting very well, but that has to do with how you develop your processes for servicing or if you're make, making uh, devices, how you set your manufacturing plants up, uh, things like that, okay? What I really like about 1345 is it emphasizes continuous improvements, kind of on bumper paint. You wanna make sure that you're continuously evaluating and when things aren't right, you make it right. So that's an important part of clause eight. Those are the, the uh, you know, get five clauses. We start with four, but one, two, and three are basically boilerplate about the system. And, uh, it, you know, there's nothing specific. It's a very generic kind of statement of fact. And then what we also had to do was recognize that at Norton, we have legacy applications. So we have um, our supply chain is outside of the department. We have uh, corporate policies about HR, things like that. And all we have to do is make sure that we cross reference with them and they that's all part of the big, big picture. They align. They align, correct, yeah. And, and again, it's, it looks like a patchwork. So I know there are, there's software out there that's supposed to link all this together. Uh, we've chosen to make it kind of a patchwork, and it, it, it's just fine as far as others are concerned. As long as you can put your hands on the records that you're looking for or your policies and procedures, we've got little folders created, made it very simple, uh, and, and named the pictures in left clause four, clause five, and so on. So it, it, you don't have to overthink. Let's talk about resource management for a moment. And again, um, let's talk about going back to our car again, or back to Krusty. Let's say clause six talks of resource management. Um, what we're talking about here is notice the, the uh, nomenclature. So six is high level resource management. 6.3 is it makes a statement about infrastructure. So in our quality manual, we'll have clause six, and then we have clause 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. See that? So, so everything we reference in infrastructure is related to 6.3. The next level down would be quality system procedure. So the 6.3-1 is about equipment. So you see we're adding a digit. And that it's kind of a new decimal system. And then the next level down would be specific to you know, alternator repair, for example. So that would be 6.3-1.1. And if we add battery, yes, procedure. Yes. So it's very much at that detailed work instruction level, and they all rolled up to our quality system. So you see how we sort of branched out? So at each level, you, you go down and you're adding a digit. That just kind of, that's a, that's a uh, really nice way to keep things straight. <laughs> all right, so why did we do this? Well, one of the reasons we did this is uh, we chose to use DNB as our accrediting body instead of Joint Commission, and they are ISO 9001 based. And so Norton Corporate decided to align themselves at corporate level with 9001. And we chose to uh, 1345 because of being a medical device servicer, it's not required. But um, when DMV comes through and sees our certification, they sort of they take a pause and realize you've made it this far, you've got your stuff together. So it makes our audit process much easier. When joint commission comes, we want to run around like your hair on fire, and now it's made things much easier for us. Yeah. In fact, um, what I really like about d, &D is uh, when they have their closing uh, ceremonies of you all, they're very much about giving you uh, helpful hints. They're not, it's not to shut you down and say, hey, 
Have you thought about this? Non-punitive. Non-punitive is much like uh, it's like having free consultancy. So we really actually look forward to the audience, as weird as that sounds, especially the and the first time they came through Norton, I was really kind of taken aback by the way that they approached it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good, it's good stuff. Um, again, this is for manufacturers and also it applies to servicers as well. And this is just a graphic that shows how, from Norton's perspective, on the left-hand side, it's very generic and it can be applied for almost anything within the hospital, it is. And on the right-hand side is the 1345, and you remove the, the blue bubble there. You can't really read the, the, the details, but you can see the link together. So we, we've gone down from whatever is, I can't read from here, but there's a number of uh, clauses that sort of merge together, as you can see there. It's very complementary with each other as well. All right, let's do an uh, ICU's assessment. And no, uh, it's the stage within this room. So, from where you all sit, your your companies overall readiness for ISO. One meaning we don't, we're not there yet. Or maybe the zero beginning. Give it thought. Let's give this. One is we thought about it. We've got so many elements in place. Five things we've been audited. We're, we're fully functioning. So I kind of want to see. Real quick, we all so we have some not in vote yet. Two uh, or four, and so this started. So this is this helps me. This is a great way, but have you ever said they call this five? But is this recommended for no commission or for no commission certified? I remember in the previous lecture, yeah, it, it works as well. You know, we've, we've still got processes that said we're doing this to kind of get joint commission, but we're saying we're aligned very well with what FDA says, right? So, well, yeah, FDA, yeah. That, yeah. So if you match it to the standards of compliance. We match it to, to the, the ISO standards. So our our process is aligned to that. But they it's kind of a they're aligned by definition, right? Right. So um, yeah, it's, they're very. I think they're very complementary. Yeah, yeah. It's just a different way that the auditors come through. They're when they do the questions a little different. Yeah. Okay, so when we went down this road, first thing we did was to look at the clauses and subclauses. We had a consultant look at our process and say, these are some things that you already seem to have in place. So you all have, you're probably further along than you give yourself credit for. If you've got root procedures, you're probably on your way. It's just maybe not under the subclause uh, protocol as, as ISO spells it out. Uh, and we found it out. Um, so what we also did was assess once we knew what the clauses that apply and they don't apply. So the, the consultant was very helpful for us because there were certain things that we thought, oh, we don't do sterilization for our equipment. He says, well, you're not a manufacturer. So that does so in our quality manual, manual, we actually say it doesn't apply. So when the auditors come, they see the clause structure, they see the exclusion. So there are services that are more than a manufacturer. We're a certain yes, yeah, so we're a certain manufacturer. So a lot of those clauses. Uh, don't apply to us and it makes perfect sense to do that uh, and then what we did is we went to eat through each um, of those clauses and kind of assessed an overall readiness and that helped us determine what things we had to to beef up and which ones we were okay with so we'll talk about that and so a scale of one to five that's how we were able to do that very subjective that's why i appreciate you all sharing where you are in the process uh, a one is like no evidence and five is well documented evidence in place and the questions that we asked about each clause and subclause was what an auditor would ask. So the first question would be, do you have specific documentation, quality manuals, clauses and procedures, work instructions that are aligned by ISO? And I see, so when they audit, before the auditors would come on site and send them those documents at that time, so they could sit there and review them and when they came on site, they would just look for some evidence of that. So the next question is, is there a set of procedures, processes and training in place that support that. And then another question would be, are there records to support it? So again, do you have the documentation? Is there evidence that you're, that you, that you're actually following that? Okay, that's the high level assessment there. Uh, step three was to develop um, way strategies to close those gaps and get, get rolling on it. So I'll give you some, some details about that. Uh, so the, the gaps are pretty much fall in three categories. Maybe you need to develop your documentation, develop training or improve records management. That's usually where the, the, the gaps fall. Okay. So documentation is really your your aligning your policies and procedures to what 
the IS whole kind of the quantum you mentioned you see that you mentioned them together correct yeah and we started the process like I said three years ago and we sort of left our, our legacy SOPs alone right and now now we're in the process of trying to rewrite them and try to get them reflected yeah so it's taken a while for the team to go you know we were working on two sets of books and it really doesn't make a lot of sense so we're trying to simplify the documentation as we go yeah, this is a snapshot from uh, an AV course that I did just a few months ago, and they asked me to create a, a short course on how to do ISO 1345. It was 12 hours. We had uh, six two-hour sessions, and I was really quite surprised, to be honest with you. We had uh, one guy who's from a well-known sc uh, school, college, uh, and I asked him to do the same assessment you just did with me, and he, he was honest at square one. And I was kind of like, oh, wow, and I've heard of this school. You know, so uh, it was interesting, but we broke it down. We went, this was our homework. I sent them a, um, a document like this. We like to copy of this. It's a, a simple Word document that you can use for your, your team if you want to. Just shoot me an email and have to send it. Yeah, so we're going to do a little bit uh, more simplified version right now. So let's do that. Let's talk about section four or clause four, quality management system. So I'm going to ask uh, specifically, its purpose is to establish a management structure for medical device production services. That's what it's all about. That's, that's its purpose. So some readiness questions. If you want to write some numbers down, that'd be great. Uh, first question is, do you have a quality manual for implementing and, ma and maintaining a QMS for devices? So on a scale of one to five, just take a note there. Don't, don't overthink it. So whatever your score is on that. Um, Next question is, uh, is there management commitment around this with responsibilities and resources? So right now, mark one to five on that one. And then uh, do you have control of your records or your documents as well as your quality management software validation? So if you have a CMMS, do you have a validation to back that up? So one to five on, on that one. And I think there's one more question. And do you have records that support that? So one to five. So real quick before we move on, what's the overall score on that particular clause? It's going to be a sign of the hand. Degrees. Let's say three. Three. See, so related. No, it's okay. You can't join the commission, but it has the same question. Yes, that's right. So you see how that works? Yeah, so you're actually further along than you think. That's what I'm trying to demystify the ISO 1345 standard. Uh, it took us a lot of to detangle. We just thought the first time I went, got a book and started reading it, and I couldn't get to it. So it was just too, it was like reading tax code. But it's really fundamental all about this. Okay? So you all have further along on this side, you really give yourself credit. Let's do um, section or clause five. And that defines how top management is committed to quality and have defined roles to support it. So let's do the first question. Uh, top management's role is clear in, in ensuring the effectiveness of the QMS. In other words, they assess how well this is working for us. So if you're keeping score, put a little uh, one to five on that one if you want. Um, you establish quality planning and management review. In other words, do you have a, an annual review that you sit back and say, this is what's still working for us? So one of the things that was really cool for us with ISO is that we had a format to follow. And we have an annual management review. And uh, we go through in each, each section and say it's working, what's not working. And if it's not working, we create uh, an action plan to ensure that. Uh, do we have document evidence of a major review of quality plan? Uh, and score on that. And then, oops, sorry, let me back up. Sorry. So, overall, kind of scores we see on this one one to fives, fours, see, what threes? Okay. We, we have an uh, annual review of the NE. Yes, and right. So that is similar where we say our strength and opportunities, accomplishments. Yes. So it's kind of similar. And where, where do we focus on for next year? Right. Like, kind of thing. Yes. So the, we, just, we were doing the same thing with the MNP evaluation. And the only difference is that um, the ISO process that we've defined, again, you can define however you want. That's what I like about it. We, we, we took each quality system procedure section and we evaluate uh, each item. So it's a little more granular than that, but you can you can define your measure in any which way you want. But all the auditors want to see is look at see what you said, and then we see the reference of who was there, the different sections. Yeah, yes, yeah. so we actually break it down by section, 
You made it very simple. It's, it's about a 20 page PowerPoint, and it's a one slide. You know, we talk about customer service, we talk about uh, supply chain management, just, you know, it's a snapshot. So every June, we, we, we have that review, set aside about three and a half hours, and kind of knock it out that way. So we don't have to overthink that either. Uh, resource management is all about your infrastructure, your people, resources, devices. So um, we have adequate resources, human infrastructure to support QMS. Uh, we have the training and qualification in, in place for effective equipment maintenance. And we have documented evidence of that. So if you're taking scores of that, how, how do you think you would score on that overall? Got two, twos and fours, threes, okay. So, you know, some work to be done on that. This one is the one that we struggle with initially. Uh, it's all about how do you define your process uh, mapping and design, and that kind of thing. It's really more for manufacturing, but we've taken the time to really use as many of the clauses that, that make sense. So for example, uh, we didn't really have a policy about ESD protection uh, before we went down this road. And the auditor said, well, you really should have something that said, how do you deal with that when, when you have to? So we wrote a quick policy stuff that in there and we're compliant. So the question would be, do you do any kind of active assessment of your customer requirements? Um, next will be, or do you do it in supply chain monitoring? This is something we we're not doing. I mean, we do service contracts, but, and we also have a purchasing process, but there wasn't anything about how do we look at receiving or inspection, handling, that kind of thing. So that's, that was new to us at the time we started this. And is the ISO ready? functionality in place. So all those things that ISO auto would look for, do you have those in place? So do you define any new installations? Do you have ESD protection? Do you define calibration and risk management? Those latter two were due to us. And I'll give you an example. So when uh, d came through, um, they said, do you all have records of the measurement equipment that you use to service your devices? And we said, yes. Uh, and we see them, yes. Uh, now do you uh, identify that's measuring to the device or service in the service record. And we said, uh, what? Uh, so it would make sense if using a, a special measurement device, thank you, uh, to, the, to the record. And so that was a small thing, not performance. And we just changed our um, documentation a little bit to say, when you use the specific tag measurement device, you have to put that in the rec service record. And it made a lot of sense because, so let's say that you had it certified and, you, and the certifier comes back and says, you know what? The gauge we use the wrong uh, put on the gauges, so all those gauges are wrong. You'd be like, well, how do we know which ones we have to go back to the test? And they have to have the relations that to be put in the in the device basically that are traced to the known standard. And then those I think are anyway. Yes. So we, yeah. we upload them also. Yep. We do the same thing. We upload them. Then that way, I'm sorry, you did that. No, yeah, I'm just going to ask uh, the list management piece. Um, we haven't had that come with the same device back. You know, we do a lot of management for free calls and uh, we didn't have a patient outcome this week. Yeah, so uh, the, the one thing that was different is uh, in addition to that was uh, we formally do a risk assessment of all the processes within our faults. So, for example, in, in, the, in the, the eight o'clock session, I talked about the risk prioritization number, RPN, and we just have that record. Uh, and if they have, things have changed much, we sort of say no change to that one, we just sort of move on. But it's it is a nice process to let you go. Um, training might be a little weak there, and we have to look at some countermeasures to improve that. So that's all that's about it. It's just new for us. Um, and then, of course, having evidence is important. The last one is somewhat new to us as well, is all about measurement analysis and improvement. So, my background is I, I came from GE with almost 30 years of experience in quality improvement. So this, this is my jam. This is what I was really hired to bring on board. Um, and all that man means is that do you monitor your customer satisfaction in any way? Do you have a complaint handling process? And you don't have to overthink this. So for example, we have an environmental care committee and we're gonna be sending out annual surveys to the, 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 the folks on that committee and just ask them, give us the feedback how we're doing. Um, we could actually, in the future, when we upgrade our CMS, we might put a customer satisfaction component or buy that. We don't have that now, but we could, you know, we could do something very basic to, to get feedback. 
Um, do you manage your non-conformances? Do you actually record them? And then do you, if there's a, a challenge that you have to follow up with, do you do any corrective and preventive actions or CAPAs? Uh, and this was new to us as well. And then do you do internal and external audits? And um, we have another group that's doing an ISO, actually doing a 9001 audit, internal audit today. And I said, well, I can't be there. And they said, well, that's probably good that you're not here. We're just going to go talk to some of your technicians. Online stuff. Yeah, so, and, and I think that's fine. That counts for us. That counts as our internal audit for this year. And then we'll do an uh, external audit uh, in February of next year. Okay, and then do you have an active use improvement? That would be an important thing to, to, to demonstrate and are there records that support that? So when you look at these elements, kind of curious where you see your company's uh, maturity on a scale of one to five. Got some twos, threes, twos, twos. So this was probably where we were the weakest and where we've spent a lot more time in, in development work. So any questions on, on that? I really appreciate y'all doing the self-assessment and being honest about it. I think hopefully it'll be helpful. So this is what we did in 2020. Uh, we had a couple things were working in our favor, but to be honest, we didn't have, we had a lot of deficiencies, and that's the ones and twos. They're in red. Um, regulatory compliance, we have to give ourselves a four. We like you all mentioned, we got our recall process and got well well documented. So we didn't have a really event on that, but we we had to work. Yeah, yeah. So I think you'll probably find something similar. Um, the other thing that was a positive note was, um, like I said, we had a very effective in-house medical device management, and I'm sure you all too, so we, that was very high. Um, and uh, the senior lead, leader champion uh, was, was crucial. He was a uh, system, level, system director, and he wanted to see this happen. Um, but as you look at the, some of the other things, the understanding what ISO was, it's pretty low. Um, ISO-based quality procedure, no, it wasn't there. Um, applicability of existing systems, again, that was low. Uh, we didn't understand how to connect. We were kind of confused. Oh, joint commission, that was this. What do you do? You upset my apple cart. So there was a lot of confusion there. And there wasn't a really a high level of buy in from local leadership. The supervisors and directors saw this as just more documentation overload. And I got too much other things to do. Um, and then at, at the staff level, they, they just wanted to be repaired. They thought this was going to interfere. So I took a little bit of uh, work to overcome that, and I'll share with some with you some of the things that we've done to do that. Uh, the other thing is, is the senior manager said, "I want this done in 12 months." Uh, <laughs> yeah, very aggressive. yeah, very aggressive. And it was kind of a you know, lighting a fire under my feet, and uh, so we had to do some things to get there. So that's yeah, well, so yeah, we're going to talk right about that because if your manager says, "Don't drag this thing out," I think it was probably a good thing. They set this aggressive target. If this was still happening, I think enough people would be saying, Scott, stop this. Get hooks out of this department. Get a plan on this job because we can't deal with this anymore. But I think it was a good thing. So, this was our strategy. Uh, first thing is they realigned the resources for ISO. They brought me over. There was someone that was retiring. There was a slot. So, I filled that. Uh, uh, they hired a change agent. That was me. Um, we used a consultant to help us draft the policies and procedures. And he was also our advocate. When we went through our first um, uh, uh, practice audit with the outside uh, accreditation body, he was there to help us understand what the auditor was looking for. And that was really nice because we're, the, 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 the pencil speak, that sometimes we're like, what? New, new language. New language, yeah. So we're like, what are we talking about here? So he was very good. And a few times he was good to push back on the auditor. He said, I don't think that, I don't agree with your assessment, here's why. A few times you all would say, okay, I, I, yeah, I see your point. So, you know, some of those things were, were mitigated with our, I call my lawyer too. Um, developing leadership champions was key. And one of the things that uh, the assistant director said is, you know, why don't we take some of these quality tools, let's go off site, and I want you to put together a, a training for leadership. And we did it, and it was really well received, and he said, you know, we should do this for everybody. What do you think? So he, I said, that's a great idea. So we had follow-up sessions with the entire staff. So now we're all speaking the same language. That was pretty important. And, uh, and then once we had that in place, we started to work toward our accreditation. Uh, here's the, the, the org chart. So system director, I reported directly to him and brought on board uh, you know, my certification and credentials. And then we also added another uh, admin person 
who was very helpful at the beginning and her role sort of, uh, there are two admins that deal with mostly uh, uh, the purchasing stuff. Uh, so I only need her um, just kind of first on my stage act. We're gonna have a manager and you can help me you know, type things up so we can have the record. So, so she's still there and we sort of pull her in as, as needed. Um, let's talk a little bit about different kinds of strategies to, to launch this. Um, if you want, and, and again, how classic GE was here 20 years, we always do four blocks, low, high, low, high. So resources on one axis, low to high, and controls. So if you want high control and, you know, it's going to take a lot of resources, then you can develop this on your own. That, that's really, it's, a, it's ours, we're going to do it, and we're going to, we're going to just shut the door and write policies. So that's one strategy. Um, another strategy is that, you know what, we don't have time, I'm going to give it all to the consultant. Okay, the pros and cons of that approach is that if it's not aligned to your resource your processes, you're going to just throw the garbage can, right? You don't buy into it. You don't buy into it, right. Uh, another process might be convert, look for other best practices. And I think at the end, I've got some bonus slides if you want to stick around. If you, you know, look at these companies and go to their website, you can download their quality manual. And it's, it's, it looks a lot like ours. It's a good framework. Uh, so again, low resources uh, and maybe a little bit more control because you can actually see it. So it looks a whole lot. You know, we're we're a servicing organization, just like they are. Looks pretty good. Uh, and then the other thing is is uh, low low of resources and control is ask Chad GPT. I did this before the, the session today, and I said just give me an ISO certified point manual. And it spit out 20 pages and it put all the subcategories. Kind of, kind of amazing, scary. But it, uh, you know, but you have to know what you're doing. I mean, I know what is required, so I know that's a pretty nice outline. I think I might do some of that verbiage. So again, that's, there's four different ways to get there. We sort of the hybrid approach. We we collaborate with the consultant. Um, during, it was during COVID, so we never actually saw our shop. But I wish you could have come in and seen our operations because he was still thinking through the manufacturer. So so weird. It's like six months in, I said we don't make parts. We we service them. You know, and he just went, oh, okay, so something's going to fly. So that's what we did. We did the collaboration. And someone in the early session asked me, well, what's the cost of this? And that's a depends question. I mean, uh, well, it depends if you want to have someone write everything for you, it might be more. But if you have a, an outline, you present that to the consultant and say, we'd like to get this tweak a little bit. What would you charge to, to, to make it fit our, our uh, uh, organization? You know, that might be a few thousand dollars, not a lot more money because you've, got, you've done most of the work, right? So that means this is many ways to get there. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the uh, role of the consultant versus me. Um, and it's kind of a nice graph here at the beginning. Mine was kind of on the low end because I was still trying to run the organization. So our consultant had much, he was much more intense. He was doing a lot of heavy lifting at the beginning and he was assessing our, those gaps just like we did a few moments ago. Um, and then we were working together. We actually met every week with the leadership. We present a quality system procedure and say, "Does this work for you all?" And let's tweak this a little bit. So it was very intensive there for the first few months. And then um, the other thing I do is get the team to buy into this. Because it was like, if, if this doesn't go past the leaders, this isn't going to go anywhere. It's like learning a foreign language for the front lines. It is. Yeah. The game that costs. So you can implement this. Yeah, this is a huge curve. It's a huge curve. They didn't really, they were a little bit apprehensive. Is this gonna, how's this gonna affect my job? It's gonna make my job better or worse. So we gave them, when we went off site, we gave them some some samples of the tools. Uh, and I'll share this one with you before I miss it. I'm glad you said that. And one of the things that was really fun to see is uh, a lot of these uh, frontline techs have never sat with a boss and actually argued with them. Or had a difference in opinion. Discussion. Discussion. So one of the things that uh, I shared with the people about the tip I learned from G is called Fistify. Have you all ever done that? You just did. So here's how you can use it with your team. This is if you get nothing else from today, this is a bonus, bonus tip. So if you're asking, hey, uh, we're going to have pizza for lunch, uh, pepperoni pizza, Fistify, we, we tell you how much they buy into it. So let's say you, you said a fist and you're all five, you're three or two. You do it all at once. So okay, let's try to fist the five, we're going to pepperoni pizza for, for dinner tonight. So we have some fives. What do you, I can't get you one. A one. Five. So here's how you use that. Say, so, well, you were five. What do you say five? 
self-sufficient. We're also looking at upgrading our CMS. And then um, next year, when we had a surveillance audit this year in February, we have another one next February. So that's kind of where we are uh, over, over time. Does that kind of make sense? Just recognize that and if you're trying to sell us to the leadership, say, hey, you know, initially it's going to be a whole lot more consultant, but over time it's going to transition to our department or our group and uh, let things on. That's kind of it, the closure. Yeah, this is a screenshot from our very first offsite. We, we've done this now. In fact, we're going to have an, uh, an offsite quality conference next week. Next week. Um, and we went out in the woods, we threw axes. Uh, you can see these guys using, using my post it notes. Uh, it's just, and then half of, in the center there, half the people work in energy. So they've never seen a phone. <laughs> They're kind of gone. Because I brought broken phones. I said, let's do some brainstorming so what the good causes. Uh, the pumps were, it was interesting to see them uh, try to figure that out and brainstorm solutions. So, again, we're just reintroducing new concepts each year. 
And it was really helpful for them to do that. Um, all right. Let's kind of see where we come, where we were. So we went from ISO ready, and this may be all you want to do at this point is do this gap analysis, develop it, uh, the documentation. Uh, we did an offsite training for our staff, as I said, and then um, we used this consultant to help us get there. So that got us from a got us ready. All right. So moving from readiness to certification took a few more steps. But if you made it to this part, you might as well go the rest of the way. Really. Uh, you know, we had the external auditor help us with our um, accreditation. We had some non-performances, but they were not major. They were just <laughs> things that we needed to tweak a little bit, as our consultant said, got our certification. And then uh, the biggest thing is the maintain. So that's it. how you go from I to becoming nice or ready to becoming nice to certified. How many years do you become really certified? Is it annual? So, yeah, so we, and I, I think it's, I don't know if this is, I'm not sure if it was the consultant's plan or whatever. What they, what we came up with was they come on site every, every year. Yeah. Okay, they do a, and they, they'll just sample certain organizations. They don't do a complete, like last, or I'm sorry, in February, they went to our imaging shop and one of our, our downtown shop. They do an audit. Yeah, they do an audit. Yeah. Yeah. So those same questions I asked you, they, they break it out by each of the procedures. And they'll say, uh, do you have training? I see training. Do you have show me evidence? Show me evidence. Um, and they really don't like me to be there. They, they talk to the operators and unbiased. Uh, unbiased. Uh, 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 yeah, it, it, it took me a while. So, you know, for the next year's audit, one of our guys, the uh, mission guy, he said that uh, he was asking us, tell me about your process. He says, well, we have a, you know, a official process, but I have my own way to do it. Oh man, <laughs> don't say that. So, uh, and it, you know, it's, it's, it's you we're teaching our guys how to, gals, how to conduct themselves in an audit. Treat this like this. Here's a bit audit by fact, man. You want to give them the yes, no standard, answer, standard, standard, standard answers. Standard answers. You want to put, you want to get your hands in the mail when it when you ask for it, but don't add more. <laughs> you know, the more I cough, the worse it, the worse it gets. So, uh, cancers. Let's talk a little bit about the payoff. Um, one of the things that's been great is to see the leadership uh, embrace this more and more. I wouldn't say that they were all 100%. In fact, uh, my current boss in the interview when I took the job said, I don't think we need this. I was like, okay. And uh, he actually asked me after he got a certification, I don't know what, what's the point of recertification. And so I was like, oh, wow. And so I asked uh, one of my colleagues who came from a manufacturer that I was certified, he says, Coxie, if you've got the certification, why don't you let it go? You know, right? He's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the other thing that's really nice uh, is that when the uh, DAV comes through, they see that they see these sort of certificates in all the shops, and they kind of breathe a sigh of relief, right? They know the, we have their act together, and uh, it, it's actually a fun dialogue. They sit and have talks with us, and they ask us, well, what things would you want us to help you with? It's very, very nice. To, to sit through that. Collaborative. It's very collaborative. Not, not punitive, collaborative. Great, great uh, relationship there. All right, let's talk about a case study. So, uh, initially, if you've ever heard the phrase pushing the rope, that's hard to do. You can pull a rope. So, I call it initially that I was pushing this. I had some, I had some pull from leadership, but um, it's been really gratifying after three years to see frontline staff embrace these quality posts. So, I'm going to share with you something. This is actually just a few, few weeks old. An example of this. So we we're using some of the quality tools that I talked about in the, in the earlier session. And here was so we always start with what's the problem? Um, the problem was that we have about 30 percent turnover. I don't know where your organization, but we get a lot of retirees, and we call it a great resignation. So uh, so we had a problem there, and the complaint was with all the variation in all the hospitals. If, if my home hospital is north of downtown, I got called to Brownsboro to to support the weekend staff. And I'm like, where are my tools? Who took my tool? And then, so they were so frustrated. So we said, so let's make this a quality improvement exercise and figure out, we don't know what the solution is, but I'm sure if we get the right people together, that we'll figure it out. So one of the solutions that we can best be is called 5S. It's all basically 5S trained. It's basically Japanese or my wife was a nurse and it'd be like if she took over my power, my workshop. First thing she would do is she'd sort of get the old way out of there then she'd say, I'm gonna put these in order. Then I'm gonna shine it for you. 
Uh, and then we're saying that I'll put a little key, you know, uh, it is the exercises. So it's a four months prior to the basic organization. And it kind of makes sense because the root cause was disorganization. Everyone had their own way of doing it. Um, and so uh, it was really gratifying to see this team sort of say, well, we don't know what that looks like yet, but we, we're, we're going to start to brainstorm it. So what we have here, this task force, um, I don't know if your techs are pack rats, but ours are. And one of the one of our pack, chief pack rats is Lee Tech. Uh, got wind that the uh, the hospital was getting rid of the crash carts. And so we had been talking about 5S, and he was like, light bulb went off. He was like, oh, wait a minute, we'll do a crash chart for this. So he, he put his hands on uh, one for each hospital. It's him in the center there. And uh, we started, uh, this is a great picture. The guy you can't see off the right is one of those negative people. And I, I was like, I thought the light bulb was going to hit me because I've never seen him actually step out of this. Conference would have been actually really, and you always talk about how you couldn't do it. But to see them actually tear these things apart, clean them out, um, wow. it's, it's very promising. That, and the cool part is, is that uh, the director was involved in this team too. And he laid out the, uh, we used it, you don't see this five it's called five us foam. If you can, yeah. if you can Google five us foam, it's got like, like layers, and you can get your knife and you can get your layers. Yeah, you got the layers and everything fits in there. Uh, he laid his idea out. He said, well, that's your idea. And he had several others. And he said, no pressure. Y'all pick which one you want. But they standardized in one, <coughs> one layout. So once everyone decided this is the standard layout, he said, okay, I'm in now. Start with the stuff. Were you fortunate that all the French cards were the same thing as well? They were. The, yeah. And that was yeah. uh, that's through the packer. Because he said there were so many that I had my pick of them. I said, I even got the ones that were in good shape. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I said, I wish I would have gotten those for my workshop. Thanks, sir. Thanks yeah, for nothing. Good. Like that, they yeah. were changing their process. So basically, really like students to work with the line over there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was one of those nice quality, yeah, yeah. And you know, I was talking to the, the, the lead tech about it, and I was really complimentary that, that, that oh, this is the other cool thing was is that we have a, a weekly uh, um, uh, huddle, you know, it's now on Zoom call, it kind of looks like they're president, but uh, it, I he said, Oh, we're so jazzed about this. Can we present this? At the next one, I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm an uh, instructor, so I'll, I'll bring my webcam. And he was like showing how to pull the, pull the drawers out and showing all the guys were just going. It was just really gratifying to see them take ownership of it. Uh, and it took us a while to get there, but we were pleased to see that. So that's really a great payoff. You know, when you see the camaraderie, and I, and I told the, the two guys in the center that, you know, this is a great story. I really would like you to share what you did, maybe at a conference. And they were like, really? I said, absolutely. This was a great thing for you all to see. Uh, so uh, these are some shots of the close-ups here. And you get looks like a send them on. Once you get the idea, then we we just did it. Uh, they were kind of surprised when I said, "Well, we're going to have pizza." <laughs> so <laughs> so, uh, but I had all of these already pre-cut, and I had all the tools laid out. And like, I said, "Hey, we're not we're done talking. We're going to get this thing done in an hour," and we did. We just knocked this thing out. Just one call. Um, one of the things that I want to point out so each, each hospital has a unique monitor. So, the bot, so the first thing said, Well, we're going to make all our drawers different because we're different. I said, No, let's make the top three drawers the same, right? So, top drawers look seen at the left. Uh, is that the second drawer? And then we also have uh, one of these. And then, uh, Jeff, uh, that was in the previous picture, he came up with an audit form. And they put that on the on the thing, and they're going to audit this every month. I'm like, I'm stepping exactly. back to this. I checked where those things are. And the other cool thing that they did is uh, when the um, uh, cabinet has been restocked, and the green looks good, they put a zip tie. So it's going to be it's ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, supplies for the procedure. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they've taken it to a, a whole new level. So the this is some of the payoffs, and we talked about this already. Um, these are some lean concepts that didn't make sense until they actually did them. Uh, the greatest thing is getting standardization. They, they said, we can't wait to do this to the shop. Said, oh, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So we gave them a tangible starting point. Um, the other thing is payoff. Uh, is, it's great to see our leadership. Well, this was a presentation at the AV conference in the summer, and I couldn't present it, but I asked Carlos, who's our director, and Adam was one of the uh, lead techs to present this thing, so uh, did it go? What's that? Did it, go? It, it went great. It's the people like uh, after the, after they're done talking. 
uh, asking more and more questions. I said, do you guys are the experts? So I, I felt very comfortable in letting them do that. So there's a payoff from the culture standpoint. Um, and this is this helps pay off for, for Norton in general. We're, we're the leader in the, the global market. Uh, we were, Forbes voted us number one in the global area. And so there's a lot of pressure. We have a lot of patients to support, and a lot of medical devices. So this is just part of the process. So that's the payoff for Norton. Um, I think the HCM world benefits from some of these stories that we share with you. It's a great dialogue. I get more out of it than I probably put into it. So I really appreciate what you're telling me, sir. And this, this part, this kit was specifically for your your rolling tag. I just went to the other side. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So this was, yeah. And that was, uh, so again, the problem was, it's they didn't have tools. That's what they didn't have tools. They got it. They didn't have the right tools, and they didn't know until they get there. You know, sometimes they bring their own, but then maybe some specific things like those accessories. Yeah. That's something that's that's we have to put your hands on it. Uh, it's so frustrating. You get the frustration driving around for something. It's like trying to find parts. Trying to find parts. Yeah. And again, we wanted a, a self-contained example. And I've been trying to say, hey guys, you need to find us a new shop so that when the orders come through, it looks like a submarine. I mean, it's very confined, there's junk everywhere. And I, and I'll go back to your corporate office or whatever. Now that you get it, and, I, and the best part is those two, the lead tech and, uh, and the senior tech, uh, they're like pit bulls on the surface. They're, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna write you up. They're going to say, hey, uh, where's, the, where's the wrench? Who had Who had that? And we're going to start looking, looking at toolboxes. We have to do something similar because we have a lot of molded shelf parts in our shop. Mm -hmm. And we have two techs, one that are 40 years. And they have the biggest pile of stuff, and they've got stuff they know it is. But we basically worked with our supervisor. I gave it to him and I said, Take it and clean up the shop. He got rid of the shelves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you don't know when it's going to stay on, it goes away. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly right. Don't be broken. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of time. Exactly. Go no hard. Yeah. yeah, we're doing the same thing with the parts. We have a warehouse adjacent in our shop. And uh, we got an edict from finance to cut our spin at the inventory. So we are cutting up like 150,000 parts just for free. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the city on this job. Yeah. And uh, we just hired a new guy that used to work for stairs. And he came in and he just picked all the stairs parts we had and said, don't need that, don't need that. Nice. Yeah. 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 But, uh, so we're going to pay for It's not like starting mounting. Like, we're going to pay for it. Right. Um, Three years ago, <laughs> we're, we're going to do uh, when they get back from this uh, actually this Friday. One of the things that I learned with her was when our intern, she was wonderful. She learned to go with the five of us that they were busy. She said, That's fine, I'll come back later. And she came back in the afternoon and she was able to do it to a bite sized pieces. So I said, Let's do five of us Friday. So, you know, we'll, we'll go through there and I'll do step one and maybe step two might look for you. But I had uh, lead tech and uh, supervisor, we had three color stickies. Red, yellow, and green. If it has to stay here, put a green stick on it. If it, we don't know, we, we don't know where to put it, it doesn't belong on Main Street, like maybe that goes in the shop, we put a yellow on it. And if it's junk, we don't, we don't know what it is, just put a red stick in. And that was kind of like getting our hands around it. You know, it's, sometimes it's hard for people to let go of stuff. I, I struggle with this at home. But uh, another another tip that I learned from this, uh, she's a, uh, her name is Marie Kondo. She says, when you throw it away, Thank you. Thank it for its usefulness. So I mean, this is kind of funny. It's like, thank you. And then we kind of throw it out. You do something stupid like that. People kind of laugh and they, they get over themselves. You know, we have a bunch of wood bubble. It's only half an hour. And at the end of the bubble, my slide is clean up the workspace slide. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just a reminder to test equipment away. Make sure work work on the equipment. Yeah. You know, get rid of the flood. Yeah. We did. We did. It worked in my office. Yeah. 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 It's, so all those things work. Yeah, those are great tips. Um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure to, to share our story. And, um, you know, we keep coming up with new things to share. It seems like there's a real hunger for this. So we'll keep doing as long as we want to listen. So I uh, appreciate the opportunity. I'll leave you with this. So this is our purpose statement. We won't read the entire thing. But what's curious about this is this was written before we ever went down the extra path. And uh, if you break out the elements, they actually fit all the products. So it's not curious. So if you want to know, well, how do I do? What kind of purpose statement should we come up with? Look at the clause and just kind of work, do some work so that we'll come up with something pretty similar to that. And with that, thank you. Uh, I have some, do you all, have some bonus slides if you want me to show you. If you don't, I don't need to be But um, you can take a snap of that.
Uh, we were hacked uh, at corporate level uh, back in June. So if you were to send it to the North, um, I didn't put North, I just put practicalhealthcare.org. That's, those are two personal ones. Uh, input to say that Gmail will work and uh, we'll be here for me and let me know how, how we did, what I could have done differently. Sorry about the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I hope that was a helpful tool that you might use when you take that back. Uh, and then, so what did, what did we do today? So hopefully you understand a little bit about ISO 1345. You're a lot closer than you probably thought when you came into the room. Um, learned why we did it, uh, some of the benefits for it. And we did kind of our own QMS assessment. So again, I've got that form if you want to use that for your company, we'd be happy to send it to you. Uh, and then we talked about different strategies, all about effort, you know, low and high, and how to control your willing to take on with, with kind of driving the right strategy. And then some of the benefits, that was just one example. I could have spent probably the entire hour giving you examples, but that was the one I was really most proud of because it's very practical and it's a building block for future things that we want to do within our shop. 